In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to make a graph by hand. There are six steps to follow to properly make a graph by hand. Um, number one, you want to identify the IV, the independent variable, and the dependent variable. So you typically do that um, before you conduct a scientific experiment. If you already have the data, typically your first column is your X variable and your second column is your Y variable. And your first column is your independent variable, the one that you are controlling and manipulating. And the second one is your dependent variable, the one you're measuring the results of to see if it is responding to your changes in your independent variable. So I have a distance measured in meters. That is the thing that I'm controlling. And something is moving a certain distance. And then this is the amount of time in seconds that's passing by um, based on the amount of distance something is moving. So the first thing I want to do is identify that independent variable and the dependent variable, which I did. So I'm going to go ahead and check that off. And then number two, I want to title my graph correctly by doing the dependent variable versus the independent variable. I know sometimes people just like to use some words to describe the actions that they're taking for a lab or words that would describe the things that are being studied. But the best universal and most descriptive way to be titling a graph is the dependent variable versus the independent variable. So we're going to go ahead and do that, which would make it time versus distance. Okay, number three, we're going to go ahead and label our axes with units. So my x axis is always going to contain my independent variable. So I would write distance and then put the unit of meters. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the y axis, except with the dependent variable. My dependent variable is time measured in seconds. All right, so I'm almost to the point where I'm going to be plotting my data points on the graph, but I'm not quite there yet. So when you're graphing by hand, depending on the graph that's given to you, you have a certain amount of lines or boxes to consider, and you have your maximum X and Y values to consider. So I know I want my X values to go up to at least 16, and I would know I want my Y values to go up to at least 26.7. Okay, we don't have to be very exact with that. So our goal is we don't want our graph to only cover a small portion of the graph, and we definitely don't want our graph to go off the entire grid as well. So the way to avoid that would to be to count the number of boxes and then divide it by a maximum value. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I count the boxes, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I know I have 11 spots to get up to 16. And then... On the way up, it looks like the same thing. This goes up to 11 as well. So I have 11 boxes to get to 26.7. Okay, so for the 26.7, it's a little bit trickier. So if we take an exact value, we have 26.7 seconds that we want to get up to. And we have 11 boxes to do that. So if I do a little bit of math, 26.7 divided by 11 equals 2.43. And we're gonna, always going to round that up because if we round it down to 2, that means that our number is going to go over. So we just want to make sure we round up so we have a little bit of extra space. So I'm going to say that's about 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for my x-axis. And 16 divided by 11 boxes gives us 1.45. So I'm going to round that up and say that is about 2. So I did a little bit of quick math to see what would fit inside my graph. And then I rounded it up so I'd have a little bit of extra space. Now we can go ahead and scale my graph.
All right, now my graph is all scaled out and I know that my X values are gonna go up to 22. So my 16 is definitely going to fit in there. And then we have our Y values going up to 33, which I know that my 26.7 is definitely gonna get there. Now I have values that aren't whole numbers like 21.1 and 26.7. I'm just gonna do my best to place it in between the boxes, uh, roughly where it's at. But when you're graphing by hand, nothing's going to be perfect. You're just gonna do your best to try to line up the data points the best you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot those five data points and then I'll be ready to complete my graph with the best fit line at the very end. Okay, so I went ahead and plotted my five points. And what I typically do is I just slide over a certain amount for the X value and then I scoot up the certain amount for the Y value. So my first one is zero five. So I start at zero and then I slide up five. The second one is four and then I slide up to 11. The third one is eight and I slide up to 15 and a half and so on. Like I said, numbers like these, they're a little bit hard to plot exactly, but you just try to do your best in placing it in between the lines. Now we're ready for our final step. We already created our scale and plotted our points. So now we can go ahead and take a look at a best fit line. And a lot of times this may not be necessary, um, but you can lay down a ruler and then just try to place it in between your lines the best you can. And it would look something like this. And again, that's not an exact science either. Um, you're just sort of placing it in between the data points the best you can to get a best fit line. So a lot of times if it is truly a best fit line or a trend line, you'd want to do that of the computer. Now I would definitely recommend completing these four steps first and always plotting the points last. The reason why I highly recommend that is because you're not going to forget to plot the points or else you'd have a completely blank graph. So if you title everything, put the labels, the units, scale it out and do all that stuff, then you have all those things already checked off and you're definitely not going to forget to plot the points or else you'd have a totally blank graph, as I said before. And then you may or may not want your best fit line at the very end. Now, a lot of times with the best fit line or some data points, you're going to want to find a slope. So I will quickly show you how to set up a slope if I'm taking a look at my best fit line. It looks like we have a data point at about 18 and 29 sort of towards end over here. So I'll take that as a final point of my best fit line. And then the starting point we know is at zero five. And then this would be my first X value. This would be my first Y value. This is my second X value. And here's my second Y value. So if I wanted to find a slope, I could just go ahead and do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and then 29 minus 5 is 24 seconds over 18 meters, and that equals 1.33 seconds over meters. So according to my best fit line, my rate of change is 1.33 seconds per meter for the object that's moving. It takes about 1.33 seconds for this object to travel a single meter. So I hope that was helpful in helping you label and draw a graph by hand. Thank you for watching and listening.